Hello everyone, this is Iran Talk and in this video I'd like to utilize the latest genetic evidence to prove that Jalaluddin Mohammed Rumi was not in fact white and he was actually of indigenous Middle Eastern descent for the most part though he likely did have elevated amounts of step ancestry much like other Central Asians today compared to the modern day Iranian. As many of you may know, Rumi was amongst the most famous and most well known of the Iranian poets, so he was of Iranian genetic stock and he was neither European nor Turkish as many Turks today also claim him. Or else, this video will also serve as a refutation to the ludicrous claims made by deluded Iranian nationalists such as Jason Raza Georgiani that Rumi was indeed white or European. According to individuals such as Georgiani Rumi, because he lived in Central Asia, which was largely ethnically Indo-European, must have been a European Nordic. But my analysis here will show that the ancient as well as the medieval population of the region was not Nordic, but rather was mixed between the indigenous BMAC population and the Proto-Indo-Iranians. In fact, the indigenous BMAC population was closely related to the native Iranian farmers of the plateau. So without further ado, I'd like to begin this analysis. So in a 2016 article for the altright.com, Jason Reza Georgiani was the first to promote this myth that Rumi was white. So here you can see there's a picture of Leonardo DiCaprio as a Rumi to the right there and in the left you can see DiCaprio himself. So what's interesting here is that Georgiani was actually equating DiCaprio to Rumi which I find very interesting. So at the end of that article, you can see that Georgiani put forth a bold claim and he claims that Rumi was white and so were all Persians and other Iranians before being colonized, genocided, raped and plundered by Semitic Arabs and Asiatic Mongols and Turks, half-savage peoples who parasitically appropriated the greatness of Iranian civilization in the name of Islam. Now what's interesting here is that I actually agree with Georgiani on the fact that the Arabs as well as the Turks and the Mongols appropriated Iranian civilization nonetheless. What's interesting to note here and as my analysis here will show the ancient Iranians including the Persians were not whites or European as Georgiani believes them to have been. And what you need to keep in mind here is that this was not a one-off thing and actually Georgiani went on Red Ice TV and put forth the bold claim that Rumi was white there as well. So he appeared in an interview with Henrik Palmgren and he claimed that Rumi was white. So actually Georgiani contributed to the appropriation of Iranian or Aryan civilization by European nationalists. So again, the primary objective of this video is to prove that Rumi was not white or European genetically and that most ancient Iranians were not white or European. And I'll specifically take samples from Rumi's ancestral regions, so southern and western Kyrgyzstan as well as northern Afghanistan, so these samples will be from there. Please keep in mind that these samples are from the latest available genetic studies which will be sourced in the description. So up first, we have the breakdowns for the original Andronoan population. So what's interesting to note is that this population was largely European and they were on average 64.4% Bronze Age Steppe or Yamnaya, 22.0% Neolithic Anatolian, 9.4% Western Hunter-Gatherer and 4.2% West Siberian Hunter-Gatherer. So what's interesting to note here is that the Proto-Aryan Andronoan population was largely of European genetic descent. Moving on, this Antrono population would later, as my analysis here will show, coalesce and mix with the indigenous farmers of the Bima culture. So you can see this uh, Bustan Bronze Age sample set was on average 62.2% Neolithic Iranian, 11.4% Bronze Age Steppe, 11.2% Neolithic Anatolian, 9.0% Caucasian Hunter Gatherer, 3.4% West Siberian Hunter Gatherer, and 2.8% Indian Hunter Gatherer. So as you'll see here, this BMAC element played a crucial role in the ethnogenesis of the ancient Eastern Iranians. So here are some Iron Age Iranian samples from Central Asia. So you can see their Andronova ancestry ranged from 46.2 to 56.2% and averaged out to 49.8%. Their BMAC ancestry ranged from 27.0 to as high as 35.8% and averaged out to 33.2%. Then they were only 8.3% Neolithic East Asian, 1.9% Neolithic Levantine and 6.8% West Siberian hunter-gatherer. So what these results prove is that on a genetic level, the ancient Iranics who resided within Central Asia 
during the Iron Age were largely genetically a B-Mechai's population and had significant b ancestry, which is very interesting. So the Kongju here are the Sogdians, the Otrar culture from the late Iron Age are Huarezmians. The Alai Nura antiquity sample is closely related to the Sogdians as well and the Wusun were Iranics from western China, from the Xinjiang province, who later migrated into Kazakhstan and other parts of Central Asia. So overall, you can see with these results, these populations were largely admixed with the indigenous BMAC farmers, which is quite interesting and remarkable. So for this reason, Rumi could not have been white, as he would have for sure had significant BMAC ancestry. Now phenotypically, due to the high steppe ancestry, Rumi could have resembled Europeans, but nonetheless, genetically, he was not European. Moving on, we have the breakdowns for the medieval era samples we've gotten from Kyrgyzstan. So these are closest from the medieval era to Rumi's homeland. So you can see their Andrano ancestry ranges from 27.6 to 60.2%. Their BMAC ancestry ranges from 20.2 to 42.4%. Their Neolithic East Asian ancestry ranges from 9.0 to 12.4%. Their Neolithic Levantine ancestry ranges from 0 to 16.4%. And finally, their West Siberian hunter-gatherer ancestry ranges from 6 to 8.2%. Regarding the averages, you can see that these populations are on average 38.5% Andronovo, 33.4% BMAC, 10.9% Neolithic Exchange, 9.7% Neolithic Levantine, and 7.5% West Siberian hunter-gatherer. So overall, with these medieval uh, Iranians from Central Asia, from Kyrgyzstan, you can see they were largely Bimakaized. And what this means is that Rumi himself was largely the product of a Bimakaized population. And for this reason, he could not have been considered to be Nordic or European or white. So again, with these medieval samples from Kyrgyzstan, you can see descent mostly from an Andrano and a BMAC source, again proving the hybridization in Central Asia between the indigenous BMAC farmers and the proto-Indo-Iranians. Now here are the breakdowns for the modern day Tajiks and you can see their Andrano and their averages out to 37.3%, their 38.3% BMAC, 11.4% Ancient Indus Valley, 9.7% East Asian, 1.2% Neolithic Levantine and 2.1% West Siberian hunter-gatherer. So what's interesting to note is that modern day Tajiks very much resemble the ancient populations of the region though nonetheless you can see additional South Asian ancestry which here seems to peak at around about 23.4%. Nonetheless, you can still see mostly Andrano and BMAC descent and a continuity of around 75% which is significant, specifically 75.6%. Nonetheless, you can see a bit of East Asian as well as Neolithic Clementine and West Siberian hunter-gatherer ancestry. So again, these results prove that the modern day Tajiks are not Nordic or European despite having significant Andrano ancestry. Again, you can see that they're largely bimakaized. So before I conclude this video, I just like to address a claim made by Survive the Jive. So in the comment section of one of my previous videos, Survive the Jive made the bold claim that the BMAC farmers were related to Neolithic Iranians but do not come from Neolithic Iran and then he attempted to distinguish BMAC and Neolithic Iranians and he claims that they are descended from different source populations who had completely different cultures. So up next, I'll refute these ludicrous claims made by Survive the Jive. My analysis here will show that in fact the BMAC farmers were very closely related to the indigenous farmers of Iran. Though to give Survive the Jive some credit later on after I released that video, he released this image and in this image you can see that the BMAC element is shown in nearly all Eastern Iranian populations which is interesting though again I think here they're using Neolithic Iranians instead of BMAC but BMAC ancestry is much higher in these populations as I previously shown. So up next I'll be showing that the ancient and medieval Iranians from Central Asia had significant Neolithic Iranian farmer ancestry mediated through the Bactria Margiana archaeological complex. So here you can see the breakdowns for the Iron Age Iranian, then you can see they're on average 50.1% Andronovo, 6.1% Caucasian hunter-gatherer, 0.9% Indian hunter-gatherer, 4.5% Neolithic Anatolian, 7.9% Neolithic East Asian, 19.4% Neolithic Iranian, 1.9% Neolithic Levantine, and 9.3% West Siberian hunter-gatherer. So what's evident from these results is that on a genetic level, 
these ancient iron age iranians from kazakhstan and kyrgyzstan had significant neolithic iranian ancestry ranging from 17.6 to 22.8 percent and what's also interesting here is that they had a bit of neolithic levantine ancestry as well and alongside this they had east Asian ancestry as well so even when using neolithic iranian populations to determine this sort of ancestry in these ancient iron age iranians you can see nonetheless they had significant ancestry that was not of a european source Thus, what this means is that the ancient Iron Age Iranians were not genetically European and had significant Neolithic Iranian ancestry alongside their Andronova descent. Now, moving on, here we have the medieval Iranians. So, you can see that these medieval Iranians, their Andronova ancestry averages out to around about 32.1%, their 5.7% Caucasian hunter gatherer. 12.9% Neolithic Anatolian, 10.0% Neolithic East Asian, 21.3% Neolithic Iranian, 4.9% Neolithic Levantine, and 13.1% West Siberian hunter-gatherer. So again, with these medieval Iranic samples from Central Asia, you can see that the Iran Neolithic element is still heavy here as it averages out to 21.3%. So again, this proves that this ancient Central Asian population residing in the region of Kyrgyzstan was not genetically Nordic or European. And overall, these results prove that the ancient Iron Age Iranians as well as the medieval Iranians had significant Neolithic Iranian ancestry. And though the distance in two of these samples is high, nonetheless, with the previous Iron Age Iranian samples from Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan as well as one of these samples, the fits are excellent. And for the most part, they're between one and two, which is interesting. Now here are the modern day Tajiks and you can see they're on average 38.4% derived from an Andronova source which is interesting. Then 6.7% Caucasian hunter-gather, 8.3% Indian hunter-gather, 5.7% Neolithic Anatolian, 7.9% Neolithic East Asian, 27.4% Neolithic Iranian, 5.6% West Siberian hunter-gather. So again you can see that the Neolithic Iranian component is heavy here refuting survive the jive. So overall, this video took a look at the ancient medieval and modern day Central Asian Iranics and proved that they were indeed the product of a Bimakaized population and were not purely of Nordic European descent. Thus, these results refute the notion that Rumi was white. So yeah, that's essentially it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.